Hello, this is going to be a tutorial to show you how to change your control board if it's needed. If you were either sent a control board for tech support or you have purchased one, this video is going to show you how to swap it. This control board is known as a Duet 2 board, number 2, Duet 2 board, and we're going to switch it without uh, having to send the electronics back to our factory to perform this board swap. So you will need a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver of a relatively small size. And the first step is gonna, you're gonna have to take the control box uh, off of the printer. So there's two little uh, screws here that are, uh, I believe that's a number five or number four Allen key. And by the way, this tape here is just to simulate uh, the wires being epoxied in place because on your printer, these wires, you're not gonna be able to remove the wires off of the box. So after we use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these four screws, this is what you will see. And so, as I said, these two wires here, they're gonna be epoxied in place and you're not gonna be able to move these wires out. So we're gonna perform that board swap doing this operation. So we are basically going to remove all the connections. This is one of our pro boards, which is also the same as our Super and XL. The micro has slightly different connections. The micro will have connections on this side of the board instead of this connector, but the connectors just need to go back into the same plugs they come out from. So here, let's go ahead and start taking out the connectors. So here, I'm gonna grab the both sides of this connector like so, pulling on the connector and not the wires. And it comes out just like that. And let's go ahead and undo these two power wires here. Make sure you plug these back in correctly or else the board will fry when you replace it. So you see I'm positive on this side, positive is on the switch side. take this connector out as well again grabbing by the connector and not by the wire and the three probe switches the Z the Y and the X okay and now that the board is actually in disconnected all the way let's go ahead and undo the three screws so there's three screws and one in each corner so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's try and get these four screws out. Try and not lose these four screws. There's three of them. We'll get that last screw in just a moment. It's right here. And a couple more turns with the Phillips head screwdriver. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna take these screws and we will be reusing them to control, secure the control board. And now it is time to take the board out. The best way to take the board out is in a maneuver like this. So I'm gonna start raising it up. I'm gonna try and pull these wires a little bit out of the way. And the power wire there stopping it, so. And if you're unable to get this board out, you can unplug these power connectors as well. So I'm pulling here on these power wires just to get them up and out of the way. And there we go, and we have that board out, and we're gonna put the new board in in the same way. But I am gonna show you one close up, and this is uh, the most important connector. This black connector only goes on one way, and I will get a close up of this so you can see. So, this connector plugs into this strip up here. Now, it can be offset in an incorrect fashion, so I will show you what this looks like here looking at the camera here. So with these on these green connectors, it's on this side and the cables are on this side. So the cables are up on this side on the green connector side. And I'm going to insert it 
So the pins line up correctly like that. So as you can see, there's a gap here and I don't see any pins. That is correct. What would be incorrect is if you downshifted it, now you can see a pin there. That is incorrect or even you know further down like that. That'd be horrible. But this can be upshifted in an incorrect fashion. So this is the correct orientation. This is the incorrect orientation. As you can see, there's no longer a gap here. And if you were to try and start the board in this state, it has a high chance to fry the board and you will have to get another replacement. So when plugging in this connector, please be sure that there is a small gap right there and that you don't see any pins. Okay, so we can go ahead and leave this plugged in while we insert the board. And we can, let me zoom back out again. There we go. So I'm kind of gently pulling on these wires to get the control board back in here. Sorry, the camera's kind of in the way for me, so. <laughs> here we go. And there's four standoffs that are part of the box or integrated into this box that the control board rests on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these four screws back in. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a long screwdriver in just one moment. This is not necessary for operation, and if you are using a drill, uh, be sure that you are using it on the lowest torque setting. So you can also use a screwdriver bit like this to kind of help as well. You can use that with a drill. So for these screws, I'm doing a little technique of holding the screw. If you don't have a magnetic screwdriver, you can kind of hold the screws like this. And I'm going to insert it into the hole right there. And I dropped one screw, but that's okay. I'll get it in a moment. So try and not lose these screws. They can get away from you. And I just lost one myself. <laughs> If you drop a screw in the board like that, you can just flip it up. There we go. And I'm just going to use this drill on the lowest torque setting, torque setting one. Maybe a little bit more. I'll put it on four. So when I tighten these screws down, there we go, there's one, All right, go across, do another, do another, and do one more. Okay, now that that's tight, let's go ahead and start reconnecting. I'm going to connect the power first. So here's the power. I'm going to open these gates all of the way. So, turning left, and positive is on the switch side, so I'm going to grab the positive wire which is right here let's go ahead and try and get a little bit of a zoom in so we can see what i am doing so we're connecting to this power connector and we're going to plug that positive in right there and you want to push it in so much that you can't see the wire anymore so let's get that and move that black wire out of the way. This can also be done ahead of time before you screw the board back in as well, if that would be easier for you. 
but in this order of operations I just decided to screw the board in first there we go see that's a good in all the way there and you don't want on this connector we don't want to put tor force on it so as you can see when I do this the whole connector is flexing I'm going to grab the connector and you can also use a pair of pliers so while grabbing the connector I'm holding it so I, so I can even lift the board up a little bit and I'm tightening by the connector and not putting strain on that connection point so we will do the black cable as well now there we go that's in pretty good And we'll do the same procedure of holding the connector while tightening. And then we have our three probe switches. So the one that's coming off the top, that is the Z. So that is these three connectors here. If you see these connectors here, one's a little bit off shifted from the others. The one that's off shifted is the Z. And it is in alphabetical order in reverse. So we're gonna go Z, Y, X. So we have Z here. And then we have two cables and they should be labeled so you can see one's Y and one is X. So we will do Y. And then we will do the X. So there you go. So Z, Y, X. And the last connector, this guy right here. This goes into two, one of the two spots here. It is the one that is lower on the board, farther away from this uh, big serial port connection there. And that is all you have to do for a board swap. You can then go ahead and test your board, make sure everything is working okay. I have the power supply right here. So let's go ahead and plug it in and try it. Let's zoom back out here. So when you turn your board on, you should have a light on the switch there. So we had a light here. And then in the bottom right, you should have three LEDs. So the quantity number three. And then the one last step, which I just forgot to do, is you need to take your SD card from your old non-working board and insert that into your new one while it is powered off. You can also do this beforehand as well. So now when we turn on, these three lights should turn on. The LED should like blink once momentarily and then turn on. or a couple times, depending on if you are on S1 or S2 mode. And this Wi-Fi light should be solid on. And that is all you need to do to do a board swap with one of our 3D Potter printers.